Hi, Randy, K7AGE. I'm in Beaverton, Oregon, which is a suburb of uh, Portland. And Beaverton, to me, always meant Tektronics. The leader in test and measurement equipment, known for their oscilloscopes worldwide. And I worked for Grass Valley Group, which is a company they owned back in the 70s, 80s, and I think into the 90s. So it's starting to rain, so let's get inside. So I'm just inside the front door now, and you know a lot of ham radio operators are tinkers and builders, and they may have may have a Tektronix scope. So um, I'm sure a lot of the viewers will recognize some of the pieces in here. Okay, this is the first Tektronix scope from 1947-1948, a Model 111, St still working today. The first product was this video calibrator. Back in the early days, the scopes were not calibrated, so you really couldn't measure what the waveform was. But if you had this and this device here, you could insert a signal and then kind of manually calibrate the front and the scope, and you can you know measure a signal. So this is the first video calibrator that Tektronix built. So this is what the inside of the 511 looks like. These then were the follow-on scopes from the early 1950s. Got a, a 512, a 13, a 514. They're all slightly different for different types of measurement uh, capabilities. This is what the inside of a lot of these look like. You can see all the parts are mounted on these ceramic um, standoffs here, with the parts going across and soldered on there. And <laughs> there's a tube socket underneath. So servicing these things could be a little bit of a challenge when you had parts mounted underneath other parts. But this was all all built here in Beaverton, Oregon. And lots of tubes, lots of tubes, lots of power. These things ran warm. This is an interesting scope. It's, it was the first one gigahertz uh, bandwidth scope. It's the Model 519. And it's got this little tiny display area and there's no vertical amplifier so you had to drive the signal directly in into the scope and since it was kind of a single shot thing I had this Polaroid camera that would take a picture of the screen. So this is a delay line that's part of the triggering circuit so it would trigger and then allow you to see the display. Here's a picture of I believe 50 of those 1 gigahertz scopes with all the cameras used for nuclear testing, you know, nuclear bomb uh, testing. So then they moved on to a series of scopes, the 500 series, with these plugins for different verticals, different horizontals. This is 545. We used a lot of these at Grass Valley Group. And 547. Again, you can see the inside of that. This scope here had this box here. You could preset different... Uh, configurations of the scope. So if you're working in like a test area in manufacturing, you could have uh, different test conditions have the scope set up to measure. 1971, Tektronix acquired this um, uh, Centrava uh, calculator company. There was a calculator, this is the tape reader and the printer in the back. And then later on, 1974, they had their own. A couple of smaller scopes, portables. They do a lot of demonstrations for students with STEM. So here you can see my voice on the uh, scope up here. And if I touch, you know, touch on the uh, uh, keyboard here, you can see that. So it gives something for the kids to, to see, play with. Portable instruments. This is a TDR, a time domain reflectometer. So you can send a pulse down the cable and see the discontinuities. We do that with our antenna analyzers now. Here's another cable tester. Um, spectrum analyzer, uh, 496. Had a joint operation with Sony over Japan. So this little Sony Tech scope with the spectrum analyzer. Some more portable scopes. This is a uh, a very early 453. I used one of these uh, when I was in college working on a black and white TV remote truck. That was their scope we had. 
and into the 7000 series, all sorts of different plugins for all different things, different bandwidths. And this is the uh, CRT for one of these one gigahertz scopes. You can see all the electronic gun stuff in here. I mean, there's it's just filled full of mechanics. They have glass rods that run the, from the front to the back, so it's thermally stable. So this thing uh, doesn't heat up and and you know vary and give you weird, weird displays in the target and the screen area. So these were all designed and built here at Tektronics. So they got into graphics terminals, computers. Um, this is a 4016, uh, 4115, various types. This one here has a uh, shutter on it so you can view that with uh, 3D glasses. More series portable scopes. Now we've moved on to more modern day where it's basically a computer that does the measurement, does the calculations, and then displays it on the screen. Here's a 465B with the, um, it's got the digital voltmeter on the top here. They have a little uh, graphics generator running showing the, uh, the animation there. Uh, I carried one of these around for years when I was a field engineer for Grass Valley Group. Carry that under the plane, put it in the overhead depart compartment. I always put it above somebody else's seat. I didn't want it to fall out and, and hit me. And a bunch of TM500. I've got this stuff on my workbench at home. 2467, a 350 meg scope. See, it's probably got a little different tube in there. It's uh, looks like it's probably a little bit deeper. Is 922. You would see a lot of these in like college labs. Here's a display of their CRTs that they made. One of the pieces that go inside. This one here, uh, here has a uh, circuit board right on the end. So they would write an electron beam right onto that integrated circuit. So that was a, a A to D converter right on the base of the tube. Some more tubes down here. Here's the, here's the gun assembly out of the tube. See, these are glass rods here that everything is uh, suspended from to make it stable. Tech um, sold color printers back in the day, is what, 1995. And they use these, um, and they use these wax bars as the ink, and it would melt that and squirt it out onto the paper. This was a uh, scope that the government sent a bid spec out for the 545 scope, and this was a complete clone built by Hickok, and. It's completely interchangeable. You can take the Hickok plug in and plug it into a tech scope. It all runs. It's all built the same way. All the color coding on the wires is exactly like uh, is exactly like the original. And this went to a court case for a number of years, and Tektronics won. So here's a couple eleven thousand series scopes. The very high end, and a whole selection of these little portables. It's a 308 and a 318 logic analyzer. It's a nice, cute little scope. A, 320, a 335. Another 465 with this generator here. So as you twist the knobs, you can change the pattern on the, the screen here. This is like that delay line I was showing you. This is a 60 nanosecond, 50 ohm. Uh, delay line wide bandwidth here's a couple racks of, of TV gear I used most of this in my career uh, especially more of the stuff on this side you got the uh, test signal generators the 650 66 655 and uh, uh, color monitors using the Sony tubes waveform monitors 
529, a 520 vector scope, 1480 uh, waveform monitor, and including a couple early Grass Valley products, the old green frames. Here's a Model 100 switcher panel. I was the engineer that did all the uh, casework, the panel layout, all the physical stuff. It was the first plastic case for Grass Valley Group. First plastic overlay panel. It wasn't um, a painted metal with silkscreen writing on it. Uh, a lot of firsts in there. The first switcher from the group that used it used push buttons that mounted on the circuit board instead of being hand wired to mechanical assemblies. And here's another Grass Valley switcher, a model 1200. Here's a 4K graphics terminal, I believe, and the blue is the Tektronics tube, and the red is a Russian copy. The guns are a little bit different, and the Russian tube is non-working. So here's a uh, desktop computer with the 32 megabyte hard disk assembly for it. This here was a printer, so it has a uh, one-line oscilloscope that would draw the image, and it used this, I don't want to drop that, used this fiber optic transfer to transfer the, uh, the image to the paper, the thermal type paper, computer printer. So if you're a Tektronix user, you ever get in the Portland area, go out to Beaverton. The Vintage Tektronics Museum currently is open Saturday afternoons. Uh, well worth com coming out and having them give you a, a tour. There's a lot of interesting history in here of technology and uh, how it all grew up here. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people worked here at one time. So I hope you enjoyed the tour here. 73, Randy, K7AGE.